section on the topic of scaling the education sector to accommodate 20 million out-of-school children. Earlier on, we had the Secretary General UNESCO, Dr. Idowu, set the background for this conversation. He harped on the need for a multilateral and intersectorial approach to the matter, citing the efforts by the federal government and stakeholders. Now, there is an important demographic in this discussion, and that is Nigeria's youth population. Joining us on the show this morning is Mr. Tama Monde Yari, the ED of African Center for Youth Development and Education and Advocate Initiative. Good morning to you, Mr. Good morning. Monday. Good nice morning. Nice to have you. Same here. Well, let's set the ball rolling, uh, Mr. Tayari. There are 20 million out of school children currently mm -hmm. in the country. And of course, uh, we know that certain uh, indices or happenings around uh, it security and the rest have hampered children from accessing quality education. In your opinion now, what do you think is the major cause of children being out of school in Nigeria? Okay, you know, just um, as rightly said, one, the issue of insecurity, uh, most especially in the northern part of Nigeria, you know, a lot of them are out of school because of the insecurity issue. And also uh, the second issue, which is um, the issue of funding, you know, uh, we are not meeting up to the global standard of the percentage that should be budgeted for education in Nigeria. You know, so we are still lacking behind. And also another thing is interest. You know, the people that are supposed to push, you know, for the quality of education don't really have interest because they have all the text to use the substitute. You know, they can send their either kit out of the country, so they don't care what really happened that much. So interest is um, one of the major issues. So if you combine these three things together, you know, it costs, we have not even seen, you know, the number is growing every day. You know, the out of school in 1960 is more than what we have now. So I, I can tell you, if we don't do something in the next few years, what we are having now will be maybe the few percent of what we'll be having next five, six years. So if the interest is not there and the, the budget towards education is not up to the standard, definitely we still have this issue and also another thing is um just like what the previous uh, speaker said we need to take advantage of uh other sectors innovation you know these days one don't really need to be in the four walls of school to be in school you can learn at home you know in a developing countries like china you don't really need to go to school you know some of them they are okay being at home using other means to learn so if we can diversify a little bit you know we, will be able to cop this issue of uh, out of school children. Talking about diversification, uh, we both uh, recall, if you would recall, that the uh, Good Luck Jonathan-led administration uh, came up with uh, a policy around the Almajri school, uh, Almajri children's school. Uh, that is not something that we see continuing following, uh, uh, you know, successive administrations. Now, the Almajri children form a large part of this 20 million out of school children. How do we mitigate this? How do we curb this? It has been an age long um, problem for education in Nigeria. Okay, thank you for, for this question. This has been a very disturbing issue for someone like me personally, because 2017, I traveled down to Yobe State and um, I just do things on my own. I go to over eight schools, taking permission from the Ministry of Education, just to make sure I talk to children. And I realize, good luck, Jonathan, era invested so much. If you travel down to places like Yobe, you see school full with internet, computers are there, but no one using it. So I took it upon myself, and I trained over 3,000 something pupils on how to use most of all these things. I said again, interest. You know, interest is not there interest is not there. If you like meetings so juicy, if you like, because it is only in the not more that um, the feeding program is still working. You know, I, I, can't, I can't tell you that they pay children on Friday 50, 15 naira just for them to come to school. But even as a dad, you don't see them until that Friday. You know, the interest of those who are in charge, parents too are not there, for crying out loud. You give birth to a, a, you know, someone and you put them out there, just go and leave, just go and leave. You know, and also and another thing is deregulation. They just need to deregulate a lot of things. You know, 
if you have five kids and four of them are not in school or three of them are not in school, government should take action. Why the education is free? You know, why are you leaving this boy not because it is the child's right for him or her to be in school. So if it is not in school, that's mean the person that is in charge is actually depriving him of that educational opportunities. So if they can actually look into that, we'll be able to copy. But interest is not there. Because if assuming this the the government that came in after good luck continue with that effort, I'm sure a lot of them will have been repatriated by now. So so in your opinion, uh progressive policies are in place actions are being taken in certain parts of the country but the interest and the willingness mm. to carry on these um uh, policies to the latter is not there it's not there definitely and that is what sustainable development is all about you know you can put up a policy that is sustainable but if it is not continuous it becomes a problem you know now if, if you just take a tour to yobe I'm using you by my degree as a case study and visit any public school, you'll be surprised. You know, you see facilities given by UN, federal government, um, you know, the facilities are there. Let's, let, let's, let's uh, shift our attention to some, to the private uh, uh, sector education now. You will find that, especially in the southern part of the country or eastern part of the country, almost every nook and cranny of communities or neighborhoods have schools in them. Mm -hmm. People rent offices, demarcate them, and set up schools, get these schools registered and start teaching there. What do you make of this? Are we seeing an, a, an offspring of these schools who are not so that are not so adequate because of the inadequacy of the federal government to implement uh, the the right to take the right steps in ensuring that our public schools are up to standard. Yeah, that is one of the big problems. Just like even in the medical sector, if you are a doctor, you are not strongly advised to own a private uh, hospital. Hospital. You know, if you are working with the government, you know, I I think government should adopt that policy. The people that are in charge, most people that are in charge of uh policies that relate to education on schools and now they come in the form of foundation oh i want to have this so 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 foundation schools and so at that the interest to focus on the government on institutions become less concerned to them they now focus on their own you know it is a very simple thing if you if you want to apply in any you know any ngo they will ask whether if you are working or you are related to any organization that will be competitive to them. Immediately when you say yes, I can tell you you will never get a job. Because they will never employ someone who is in the uh, organization that will be competing with them. So you see schools here and there. You see principals of public schools on their own private schools and their children and in private school. They will not have time. They will not even think of uh, what to do, you know, in respect to. Back then... You know, if you attend government schools, you know, you'll be very proud. Oh, I went to this college, I went to this, but now it's nothing to write home about. Private universities now are becoming, you know, uh, are coming up, you know, and they are replacing. Yeah, they're, they're becoming more in vogue. More in vogue, more involved, and more innovative than even the public schools. So that will be, and also, schools need to be managed by the government. They need to do a lot of proper check and balance. Because most of the things that are happening, you see, you see it happening in most of all these quack schools behind. Children beating one another. You see things that shouldn't be seen are found there. You know, so there is need for government to set a standard. You know, for you to become a teacher, even in private school, you should have an NC. It should be a standard. You know, because the people that you see teaching in all those private schools are those people that are from the public school who are not well taught. So now they now move to the they now move schools. to the private sector and transfer the same knowledge to the, so the same inadequate the, knowledge the same inadequate knowledge and the vicious cycle continue continue we keep asking what is the problem so there should be standardization well my angle will come from commendations to the work that you have done as ed in yobe and meduguri with training peoples in line with digital schools my concern now is how do we get to re-engender the willingness of parents and caregivers amidst this current economic hardship. 
to be able to send their children back to school and also on the part of teachers a lot of persons say that they don't need to wait to go to heaven where the reward is probably waiting to be able to get the right remunerations that we need just in a minute or two as we wrap up this conversation okay very 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 important because uh if they are not taken care of definitely they will find every means possible to take good care of themselves you know uh, the government who are in charge of their welfare need to critically look into it. You know, most of the retired civil servants, they won't have access to their own gratuity. It's a very... Uh, and if you don't have a quality teachers who keep having a failed system, no nations ever grow beyond the quality of our education. And the quality of education is not even the schools, it's not even the structure, it's the teachers. If you hear quality education, it's not about the school. You can build big walls and nothing is there. But if you have a qualified trained teachers who are happy with what they do will then say okay we have a quality education then also in the side of parent uh there is need for because imagine you spending so much time going to school at the end of the day there's nothing to show for after finishing school you spend three ten years without getting a job it becomes you feel very tired and now the next generation i even say in education is a scam so they prefer just sitting at home and do one or two things so let me just go on social media what well, i know in one week if i have up to ten thousand likes i can get my twenty thousand or ten thousand dollars and why should i go to school you know so the people that are in charge of this system need to actually wake up or else we may find ourselves in a in a generation where <laughs> education will no longer be there again now now in in closing in closing what would be your advice to uh the nigerian government ngos the private sector or even the international community with regards to the importance of education and the importance not just education but quality education okay thank you so much um just like you rightly said multi-sectoral approach is important and we need an open governance you know let's let's ask them questions let them answer us you know that's where we'll be able to have i uh, will know where the problems are you know, we know or whether if it is the problem of policy or if it is the problem of interest or if it is the problem of fund or if it is a problem of governance that we know but as you can see everyone is working in silos you know oh i'm just let me just do my own and also the interest you know in those days everybody is very much concerned about what his or her neighbor is doing oh you're not why are you not in school but these days no one cares whether you're in school or not so there should be this community watch over all and also corruption has always been an issue if you are in a place where you are in charge of fund that has to do with education please temper mercy with justice or temper justice with mercy well i must thank you mr tama monday yari for taking our time to be on the program this morning we do well to appreciate you thank you so much i appreciate it and thank you to to our viewers out there for engaging with us from starts to finish it's been a program fully packed with um a lot of interesting discussions remember that you can always watch us live on dstv channel 258 on star times channel 140 avo tv app Limex World TV app and Niger TV app. For more stories, you can also visit our website at www.adbntv.com. You can also watch us live from every part of the world by logging on to www.adbntv.com forward slash live. My name is Chijoke Okafo.